Hi, my name is Mandy Krause and I am co-owner of Parker Creek Ranch located here in Dehennis, Texas. We produce grass-fed beef and pasture-raised poultry using regenerative production methods. We market our product to the greater San Antonio area. We provide opportunities for the community to participate in on-farm education programs and we offer consulting services. Today, I would like to tell you about one of the land management tools we use to help us with one of our greatest challenges and limiting factors, deep soil ripping for water conservation. We began our farming journey at the end of 2010, just as the greatest drought on record since the Dust Bowl was underway. Over the next two years, we had to destock cattle going from 100 cows to just 20 head, and even that was exceeding our carrying capacity. We relied on income from our pasture-raised poultry, which included broilers, laying hens, and turkeys. It was really tough building a business at this time. The land was suffering in front of our eyes. It had been overstocked with little to no rotational grazing system for over 100 years and had no buffer against drought conditions. There was no forage available, and what stubble was remaining was devoured by termites. When a rain actually did come, our hard pan top soils would shed water like a duck, and we would watch from our porch a river of water running off our pastures. We'd repeatedly say we must find a way to capture, sink, and store that water. After an extensive search for possible solutions, we came across a technique called key line design, which is a system used to capture water on the landscape. We also learned about subsoiling or deep soil ripping, which can also slow and sink water. We believe that pairing these two concepts would be an affordable technique that we could implement on our perennial pastures. In March 2014, we purchased a single shank subsoiler to pull behind our old Ford 5000 tractor and began ripping the bare Kleingrass pastures on contour at 10 foot intervals. The results were amazing and nearly immediate. By that fall, we documented Kleingrass standing tall exactly where we had ripped and a dramatic reduction in bare ground in the areas between the ripping. We were encouraged by our visual observations and preliminary vegetation data and excited to learn more about this technique and its ability to capture and store water on the landscape. Deep soil ripping is the practice of pulling a subsoiling plow with a tractor to cut and open the soil. This practice is used to decrease soil compaction or open clay pans by creating lateral fractures in the soil. Soil compaction is a concern for rangeland because it reduces rainfall infiltration and increases evaporation and water runoff. Compacted soils also reduce nutrient movement organic matter, microbial population and activity, and vegetative cover. Okay, so this is our, our subsoiler that we purchased at a, a used equipment auction. It was originally a six shank subsoiler uh, used for probably cropland purposes. Uh, but for rangeland purposes, we don't want that much soil disturbance uh, overall. We're just, the goal is to aerate the soil with these deep shanks. So we modified it down to two shanks located directly behind the tractor tires. Uh, this tractor is 120 horsepower. It's pretty much everything this tractor can do to pull these two shanks once they're uh, in the ground fully submerged, at which is approximately 29 inches. Something we do before we start ripping a piece of land is we determine the contour of that landscape. The purpose of knowing the contour is so that you're maximizing water catchment. When rain falls, it's going to move in the quickest direction downhill. And what we want to do by ripping at 10 foot intervals is to maximize the catchment of that rainfall and distribute it evenly across that landscape. And there are two ways to go about doing that. Number one is looking at a topographic map to uh, determine the contour of the land. And the second is using a laser leveler 
to furthermore determine the, the contour of that landscape. Our goals uh, for subsoiling are, are primarily two things. Uh, number one, decreasing soil compaction, and number two, capturing uh, moisture, which is, of course, rainfall. Uh, the subsoiler is a great tool for doing this because it opens the hard clay pans that you can see in our landscape. Uh, when rain falls onto a uh, heavy clay soil, the, the top layer particles come together and you get sheeting and the water runs off the soil. So the idea of subsoiling is we're creating these deep rips or fractures to allow that water to infiltrate the landscape. In 2018, we received a SARE producer grant and collaborated with Texas A&M University and AgriLife Extension to, to conduct on-farm research examining deep soil ripping as an effective management tool for water conservation. We wanted to better understand this technique and how it could benefit the land. Our research was conducted in two sites that had never received prior ripping. This one is a well-established Bermuda grass field, and our other plot is in a pasture about a quarter mile away, and it is a fallow field that's in poor vegetative condition. It's comprised mainly of bare ground. Each study site is approximately four acres in size and is characterized by a divot clay loam soil. To create a strong experimental design and establish our treatment and control plots, a non-invasive electromagnetic induction instrument was used to map soil properties on each site, including the depth, texture, percent clay, percent sand, percent silt, to total carbon, and organic carbon. Treatment sites were ripped in August 2018 when the soils were dry to allow for deep fracturing. We took a variety of soil and vegetation measurements between the ripped and not ripped sites before and after treatment. The loss of water through runoff and evaporation is one of the biggest concerns with compacted soils, so measuring infiltration was important for this study. The single ring constant head method was used to measure hydraulic conductivity or how quickly the water can percolate into the soil at saturation. We conducted chemical and microbial analyses of the soil samples. We measured vegetative ground cover, including bare ground, litter, grass, forbs, and woody plants using a meter squared quadrant to determine any change in vegetative cover. Visual obstruction was evaluated using the Robel pole method. Standing cover is a prime component of habitat for wildlife species who may benefit from additional vegetative growth through ripping. Photo points were taken to document long-term changes in vegetative cover. Forage clippings were collected to assess forage biomass and nutritive value of the vegetative cover for grazing livestock. Deep soil ripping had the most significant impact on water infiltration. Fractures created during ripping allowed the low amount of rainfall received in this region to be more efficiently captured for vegetative use. Prior to ripping, all sites had similar infiltration rates. Ripped areas in both study sites demonstrated increased infiltration rates, but the ripped Bermuda grass site that started with good vegetative cover doubled water infiltration rates. RIP sites had slightly less compaction than control sites, but the difference was not significant. Microbial reports one year post-ripping demonstrated nitrates and ammonium higher in both RIP sites. Ripping also improved total fungi and amoeba populations. Active fungi were higher in the control sites, likely due to less short-term disturbance. The ripping had no significant effect on short-term data collected on vegetative ground cover type or nutritive value of the forage. Although the total pounds of vegetation produced in the rip sites was greater than in the control sites. The Robel pole method to measure standing biomass had a trend towards greater visual obstruction in ripped areas. This increase could have been related to the tall forbs recorded on the rip sites that were growing as a result of disturbance from ripping. 
The strong evidence from this project and other related research indicates that deep soil ripping can be an effective method to capture and store water on the landscape because of increased rain infiltration. While infiltration can't make up for low organic matter, it can improve plant growth if other soil factors are adequate. This study was limited to one soil type, but others have found that subsoiling methods to be most effective on heavy to moderate soils. Frequency of ripping on any site may vary according to soil type, vegetative cover and response, and rainfall. Ideally, soil moisture will be at 50% or less of field capacity, but not completely dry to maximize shank depth and results. Frequent subsoiling could have a negative effect on soil microbiology, structure, and vegetation. It is important to monitor soil and vegetative characteristics to determine how subsoiling has increased capture and storage of water in the soil and at what point the effects are no longer seen and another ripping event may be needed. It is important to allow vegetation to recover before grazing with livestock. Although ripping can increase rain infiltration, this study demonstrated the importance of prior vegetative cover by the effects found in the Bermuda grass field as compared to the fallow field. Poor vegetative cover is often the result of more critical soil health issues, such as the lack of organic matter. It is important to address those concerns first before increased rain infiltration can be of value to the established plant community. In those cases, additional tools or other tools may be better suited to help achieve your goals. When used under the right conditions, we believe that deep soil ripping can be an effective management tool to help capture water on the landscape, which is a critical issue that affects us all. The end.